friends and viewers, good day. Nikos Kazantzakis, a well-known, a very famous, world-renowned writer, a Greek writer, Nikos Kazantzakis, had written a very two remarkable book. One of the name is Zorba the Greek, a very famous book, a novel, a fiction, and another one, The Last Temptation of Christ. So today we are going to discuss about Zorba the Greek. This is a novel, an, a fiction written in 1946 by Nikos Kazantzakis and published also. Uh, so Zorba the Greek is the first novel of Cretan author Nikos Kazantzakis. Published in 1946, the story chronicles the narrator's friendship with Zorba, who accompanies the narrator on an extended trip to Crete. The novel revolves around their desperate personalities and perspective. While the narrator is a young bookish intellectual with a penchant of abstract thought, Zorba is a 60-year-old man with an enthusiastic appreciation for life and authentic lived experience, something the narrator yearns to attain for himself. Zorba the Greek began with the narrator at a cafe in Piraeus, waiting to take a boat to Crete, where he has rented a lignite mine. While he is waiting, he thinks of, to, of his friend Stavridaki, Stavridaki, who recently left to fight for the Greek in the Caucasus. Before leaving, Stavridaki called the narrator a bookworm for his intellectual inclination. Through his venture with a lignite mine, the narrator means to escape this existence as an intellectual. Alec Zorba entrance to the cafe interrupts the narrator's thought. Zorba approaches the narrator and asks to go with him, offering to cook for him. The narrator finds himself drawn to Zorba's boldness and simplicity. He agrees and they set off for Crete. In Crete, the narrator and Zorba first stay at the inn of Madame uh, Hortensi, a French woman who was a cabaret singer in her youth, as well as a paramour of the Italian, Russian, English and French admirals who ruled over the Greek island. She claims that her intervention on behalf of Crete saved the island many times. Zorba woes her and begins an affair with her. He and the narrator build a hut near the sea where they spend their evening. After work at the mine, Zorba regales the narrator with tales of his experiences. On Sunday, the narrator and Zorba visit Hortensi. The narrator anguishes over his tendency towards, towards his intellectualization and abstract thinking as they interact with the villager. Despite enjoying Crete's nature and landscape, he admires Zorba's authentic city, which is evident through his way of thinking and dancing. Because things are not going well with the mind, Zorba comes up with the idea to build an overhead cable for the top of the mountain to the coast. The narrator gives Zorba permission to do so. Meanwhile, he continues working on his manuscript. One afternoon, as the winter approaches, the narrator is with Zorba and other village men. They all catch sight of an attractive widow who has drawn the attention of Pavli, the son of village elder Mavrandoni who owns the mine the narrator is renting. The widow has refused to marry Pavli and left the youth distraught. The narrator finds he is attracted to the widow, which causes him great anxiety and challenges his static tendency. He believes this attraction is an obstacle to his spiritual journey. So he doubles his focus on his manuscript. Much to Zorba's consternation and disapproval at the mine, 
Zorba instinct saved the man and the narrator from collapsing gallery. Another event that intensifies the narrator's internal conflict and his admiration for Zorba. With the passing of the Christmas and New Year holiday, the narrator only feels more tormented by the clash between the material war, uh, work food, woman, and the spiritual. He grows disenchanted with literature and presses Zorba to build the cable railway quickly since his money is running low. He sends Zorba to the town of Heraklio, the capital of Crete, for three days to acquire the material they all need. During Zorba's absence, the narrator hears from his friend in distinct land, but days pass without Zorba's return. Finally, on the sixth day, the narrator receives a letter in which Zorba admits to spending his time in Heraklio with a young woman instead of buying and returning with supplies. While Zorba is away, Hortensi inquires about him and the narrator, feeling pity for her, pretends that Zorba wrote to her, making up the contents of the letter and eventually saying that Zorba has asked her to marry him. Moved, Hortensi accept. As she leaves, they discover the village in tumult. Heartbroken by the widow, rejection, probably committed suicide and his body has washed to shore. The mourning villager blamed the widow for Pavli's suicide and the narrator scolds them. Zorba returned bringing everything needed for the cable railway. He and the narrator visit the monastery to get approval to use the forest during uh, construction. There the two encounter Zikriya, a monk, and discover that the monastery's mired hypocrisy and corruption. Still, Zorba gets permission to use the forest at a good price and he and throws himself into work to make up for the 12 days lost while he was in Iraklu. Hortensi come to talk to him and the narrator reminds Zorba that he told her that Zorba would marry her. During Easter, Zorba and the narrator prepare to host Hortensi, but she has fallen sick after dinner. Zorba and the narrator talk and Zorba leaves for the village while the narrator feels compelled to walk alone. He runs into the widow and drawing courage spends the night with her. He finishes his manuscript. The next day later, the widow is sighted entering the church and the villager assault her. Zorba intervened, but uh, Mavri Doni kills her. Saddened, the narrator and Zorba retreat to their hut. The narrator and Zorba visit Hortensi and see that her condition has worsened. Her death unleashes the villager. Repetitiousness as they hurry to loot her home. Several days later, Zekria, the monk, returned after burning down the monastery as Zorba has suggested. He dies on the beach shortly after the narrator and Zorba had suggested he dies on the beach. The narrator and Zorba inaugurated the cable railway. The next day, inviting the villager, the monks arrive, speaking of miracle in finding Zikriya dead in the chapel, killed by the virgin for having set fire to the monastery. Unbeknownst to the monks, Zorba was the one who moved the body. Zorba tests the cable railway, which ends in disaster. The villager and workmen flee, leaving Zorba and the narrator to eat and talk alone. Far from being angry, the narrator asks Zorba to teach him how to dance. He feels satisfied by the experience. Despite its failure, the narrator feels a premonition after receiving a letter from Stravridaki but he ignores it. The narrator leaves Crete a few days later saying goodbye to Zorba. When he arrives in Heraklio, he receives word that his friend Stavridaki has died. Five years passes in which the narrator occasionally received letter from Zorba. Zorba has continued traveling and finally um, remarries in Serbia. He asks the narrator to come see a beautiful stone. While the narrator is tempted, he does not go. The narrator keeps Zorba and Stravridaki 
in his thought one day the narrator feels another premonition that compels him to write about his experience with zorba when he finish a letter arrives and reveals that zorba has died and left his santuri instrument to the narrator a instrument a musical instrument for the narrator so this is the story of zorba the gi the greek by nikos kazantzakis and this is a one of the famous uh, greek writer nikos kazantzakis had written let us see the theme of this the theme of this novel is uh, it revolves around modernity versus tradition spending time in crete ignites conflict between narrator's modernity his education his attachment to reason and logic and the irrational more authentic perspective of zorba and the villager at the beginning of his sojourn the narrator mentioned that renting and operating the lignite mind is a means of overcoming his bookworm identity the narrator feels that he has reached an impasse where the world of ideas he inhabit has only led to spiritual malaise he has aspired to reach a point of self sufficient contentment through this close contact with the villagers as well as the more active life but for all the beauty the narrator encounter present life in proves brutal zorba allows to him to see that a tantric city is not found in external concept like tradition and modernity but in individual li- lived experience zorba plays a central role in this clash between tradition and modernity as a mediatory figure between the narrator and the villager zorba is also a figure from narrator's cultural past resembling the traveler who used to tell the narrator's grandfather stories in exchange for hospitality unlike the villager zorba white experience allows him to transcend blind submission to ideas of god and religion and allow him to connect with the narrator so ladies and gentlemen zorba the greek is one of the best greek uh, uh, novel written by Nikos Kazantzakis and and another uh, novel he had also written a very controversial novel the last temptation of christ by the same nikos kazantzakis i hope you will enjoy when you will read this book thoroughly thank you